Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. It was a big week this week for some youngsters mm. across Europe getting called up to the international team, scoring goals. I mean, Cole Palmer, yeah, well yet fair. again, scoring against Newcastle. I think it's 18 goal involvements in his last 19 starts. That might be the most of any player in Europe amongst the under-21 mm. categories. So that's exactly what we're talking about today, under-21 footballers. We're going to go through Doogie's list mm. of the top 10 under-21 players this season. Yeah. So who have been the best wonder kids in the world? Right now. Yeah, that's important. So the categories you've got, Doogie, under 21 players, it's it's formed this season. Because there's been a few high profile under 21 players with injuries and major stuff. Major so injuries. With, with well. Major injuries. We're doing it on this season. It's going to be your list, 10 being the 10th best, and obviously one being your number one. And Ellis, you're going to sit back and critique them to your heart's content. Pitching as much as you so, want as well. You yeah, exactly. Plenty to go out, I reckon. Some um, number 10, who is the 10th best player under the age of 21 in the world right now? Well, Smithy, I think you'll be delighted with this one. Go Destiny on. Odology. Oh, I think Spurs. Could be higher, maybe. Could be. Okay, okay. I thought you might not be happy about something, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> Destiny yeah. Odoji. I think he's been sensational for Brilliant. Spurs really this year. Um, signed the year before this summer, but was spent the last year on loan at Udinese. Yeah. One of Fabio Paratici's like many great signings from Syria, along with Benton Kerr, Kulusevski. Uh, but he's come in, and I think the the fullback role at Spurs is quite interesting. It's quite testing. You're having to invert at different points. At Udinese, he generally played in a three-five-two as a yeah. left wing back, so he's sort of much more attacking. And have much more freedom. Uh, but at Spurs, I think, you know, he's been pretty much an ever-present. I think he's fifth for minutes played. I think it's two goals, three assists. Uh, I think he's looked really, really comfortable in a Spurs side that I don't think many people had them down for competing for Champions League football this year. I think most people had them eighth or ninth after losing Kane. I think he's been one of the best left-backs in the league this year. Do you think he is the best left-back in the Premier League? It's difficult, form? isn't it? I mean, so many top left-backs have had a lot of injuries this yeah. year. Shaw, Robertson, Robertson usual yeah. candidates. I think Ryan Nori at Wolves has been really good. I think Anthony Robertson at Fulham. I think he's right in the mix, though, Destiny Adoji. I think he's been really, really impressive. Yeah, it's a good point you make about the inverted fullbacks. Spurs had a game recently where both Poirot and Doggy were out against Wolves and we lost that game. It was mm. interesting how the whole formation shifted so I think it's a good shout. Your thoughts on Adogi quickly? Yeah I think he probably is on form the best left back in the league at the moment. I think he's just yeah you can see why he's on the list. I think maybe he could have went a bit higher. Yeah but I think it could be a bit higher. I think yeah well. shoe in for the list just and it's also rare left backs and right backs I feel like are so hard to come by especially on the left side as well now. It's mm. like yeah just what a player I think he will yeah. be if Spurs can keep him for years to come what a, what a sign. Okay it. stick him on can you reach the number 10? I can yeah, yeah, yeah okay OK, let's go to nine. Next up is Matthias Tell. Now, this is a player that a lot of people might not have necessarily heard of. He's very much a bench player at the moment at Bayern. But he was signed as a 17-year-old for Ren for almost €30 million. Euros. And I think many people were like, that's a lot of money for a 17-year-old. Last year, just five goals in the league. But this year, he's averaging a goal or assist in the league, actually in all competitions, around every 70 minutes. Really, really impressive. Felt like he'd maybe had a little bit of a rift with Tuchel because Tuchel, when it was announced he was leaving at the end of the season, tell a few days later, signed a new deal to the end of this, uh, end of this decade. Uh, but he's been magnificent this year, really good technical footballer. And it feels with, like, with Thomas Muller potentially you know, retiring in the next few years, with Kane already into his 30s, this is the future of Bayern Munich right now. And, uh, yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant. Mm. I think maybe the issue I'd have taken with it is like the fact that he's a bench player, but also most people on the age of 21 historically in football are. I think yeah. nowadays people come through and they're expected to be a first teamer at the age of 18. Um, there's clearly a reason they spent that much money on him. Obviously, there's caution with that, spending that much money on a young striker like, like Pietro Pellegrini. I remember when Monaco mm. spent loads of money on him. Everyone was like, wow, and what is he doing now? Um, but I can't say I've seen much of him. But I'll wait for my judgment until I see the rest of the list. If there's a name on here which I'm expecting to Ooh, be on I like it. and isn't on here, I will be very disappointed and we're expecting to be where he is. OK, yeah, yeah interesting. 32 appearances, seven goals, four assists for Bayern this season. Only scored one goal in his last 22 for Bayern, though, but started the season uh, unbelievably well. And only five starts. Six, six goals in the first ten. Only so. five starts. I don't know nine. Harry and a doggy start every week the... in, week <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not the story. Rewind 45 minutes, Tomlinson. We're calling Harry Kane one of the best strikers in the world, if not the best. Mm. So, okay. it's a difficult role. Okay. okay, tough that one, I think. This one, I think, is super harsh, Dukes. I really think this one's harsh. I think he's too low. Cole Palmer. Yeah, I mean, I think based on this season, yeah, only I'd agree. Jude Bellingham has got more goal involvements for an under 21 player. He's basically carrying Chelsea mm. through games, and I know not carrying him to massive heights, so they're 11th, but. He's a stunningly good player. He 13 is. goals, 11 assists this uh, season. Massive respect Chelsea. to him. I mean, he'd only ever started three Premier League games before this year. He was brought in pretty much on deadline day, I think it was. Big fee. And I think people were like, Chelsea have spent a lot of money on wingers already. Mudrick, Madawaki, Sterling. Where is he going to fit in? But as you say, carrying Chelsea, it's not been a good season for the no. club, but it's been an excellent season for Cole Palmer now in the England squad. 
I'm super impressed with him because, you know, to come into that situation at Chelsea, Chelsea are in a very difficult situation as a club. They're worst in their modern history. And for him to perform like this is, is massive. Um, I think there are a fair few penalties in there. People watching will be like, oh, he's a penalty merchant. I think that's very harsh. He also scored in big games. Mm. United, City, Arsenal, Spurs. I think he's had a great year. I, I get your point. Where would, you have a, where would you have Menace? I think he should be top five. I think we're mm. just looking at the structure of the list right now. We've got a first team starter, doesn't start. And then we've got Cole Palmer just above him who has carried Chelsea on his back. So I think... He's in, he's in the danger zone for me. But <laughs> Cole Palmer should be top five, is my opinion. But well, we don't know who's above him, so it's hard to say. Mm. Scored or assisted 46% of Chelsea's <laughs> Premier League goals. I think eight is harsh, I'll agree with you. I think Why Chelsea's position so in the league has maybe affected my opinion. OK. Is that the reason you've got him so low, then? I, there's also some really high-quality players. OK, coming. go on, stick him up and we'll see who's, okay. who's coming next, then. Right, Warren Zaire Emery. Mm. They're calling him the new Fabregas. <laughs> People are excited. <laughs> he is excellent. He's starting Champions League games for PSG at 16. Yeah. Uh, played a knockout game against Bayern, becoming, I think, the youngest ever player to play in a knockout game. Uh, regular for PSG. You know, we talk about them being up and down in the Champions League in recent years. This is almost a... Well, he's been in their academy for about 10 years now. Feels like a homegrown French player. Scored on his debut for France as well. Excellent controller of tempo. Can do a little bit of defending. Very good in the final third as well. I'm really excited about this guy. And uh, unlike a lot of players on this list, an out-and-out -out central midfielder, I think that's a very difficult position to play at that age. Uh, and he's an excelling at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Be, like you said, playing for an 18-year-old French midfielder to be in that... In and amongst that French squad, as you say, at his age, is, is an incredible achievement. Do you think seven's about right, or would you have him higher? I think seven's about right. I think, yeah, he is... I think if we watch this back in, like, five years' time, I think he is a shoe in I think he's unbelievably talented for his age. I really rate him. Also, he's just got an amazing name. It's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> what a name that is. It is cool. important, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. really important to me. Um, I think, yeah, he really does belong on this list. And you could argue, you know, maybe because of how PSG are doing, like, maybe he does deserve to be a little bit above Palmer. Fair. Then maybe it makes Palmer even more impressive. That I was going to say that. Is, that, is, is yeah. it harder to do it in a team that's tenth than a team that are top of a league? Top of the league. Is that, is that yeah, it's their it? league, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Palmer. Oh yeah. Which is poor Cole. I do think <laughs> though there is something to be said for doing it in Europe on a consistent basis. Mm. You know, we're seeing him start against some of the best teams in the world. You know. But what I would say to that is Cole Palmer hasn't had the opportunity to mm. do it this year because they're not in Europe. So he might yeah. he might be doing it in, in Europe if they're in. So it's a, it's a tough debate. But let's stick him at seven. And I think I, I get the feeling that this is going to critique more when you see more of the players, right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think this is actually this my one's a rogue card. shout. This is a rogue shout. Coming up, having above Cole Palmer. I think mm. this is Nico Williams, Athletic yeah. Club winger. Um, I think I've maybe been slightly swayed by aesthetics and the background to his story as well. His parents crossed the Sahara uh, before he was born to make Spain. Um, his brother, uh, Inaki Williams, plays for Ghana. Nico represents uh, uh, Spain, sorry. Inaki's known for just ultimate consistency. He did, I think, 250 La Liga games in a row over wow. six seasons. But Nico is the superstar of the family. He is a big game player. He's a right-footed left winger, but can also play on the right-hand side. And I love watching this guy play. He's a complete live wire, exceptionally fast, great acceleration, uh, and is now picking up in his performances for big games as well. I think I, there is a case that he's gone too high on the list. I think so. But I think my personal preference of watching him play has maybe swayed me. 28 appearances, six goals, 11 assists uh, for Bilbao this season. So do you look at that, if it's a numbers game, should Cole Palmer be above him? Yeah, I, I was going to say that. Statistically, yeah, I don't know. what. It is, if it's a purely aesthetic thing, then... Yeah, but Cole Palmer should be above him. I think sometimes we have this habit of, like, with Wonder Kids as well, like, the English Wonder Kids were always a bit like, what was I know? But, and it's like when Inyaki was his age as well, there was a similar hype around Inyaki that hasn't sort of come to fruition as yeah. well. Obviously, that's irrelevant the one, right now. But mm. The one um, thing I'd say about Nico is that he's been playing regularly for Athletic Club for a number of years. Cole Palmer in and out of Man City. Mm. This is his first full season. Cole Palmer yet to establish himself with England. Nico Williams one of the first names on, on the Spain team sheet as well. It does feel like he's at a slightly different stage of his career to Cole Palmer, even though this season maybe hasn't been quite as exceptional. Got the buyout clause that becomes active this summer as well. It's exciting. Linked with Arsenal in the past. Do you think that would be a good fit, Arsenal? Yeah, it's a difficult one for Nico, isn't it? Because they've obviously got Martinelli, they've got mm. Trossard, they've got yeah. Saka. Very difficult to displace at least Martinelli and Saka. I'd love to see him go to a club where he's going to be first choice in the Champions League. I'm not sure that's necessarily Arsenal, but he'd be a great option for Arsenal. I just think for his own career, I'd like to see him go mm. somewhere else. Yeah, OK. OK, let's get about that. Bit of a controversial one, that one. So they are... Could be quite high. 10 to 6. Five. Fifth best wonder kid in the world right now. Lamine Yamal. We talked about him in the first section of the show. I think, yes, yeah, statistic-wise, you guys can argue all you like about these five that I've already put on there. But this guy's 16, playing in a Barcelona squad 
that are struggling. You know, their manager is already leaving at the end of the season, citing exhaustion. They've actually gone unbeaten since he announced that. But we already talked about <laughs> their injuries in midfield. We've talked about Usman Dembele leaving. We've talked about Ansu Fati leaving. This guy's already played, I think, 37 games this season, which I'm slightly concerned about because he's only 16. Yeah. We've seen what Pedri, the impact yeah. that's had on him. We've seen Ansu Fati struggle with injury as well. But in terms of his performances this year, he's carrying probably the second best or well, second biggest club in the world on his shoulders. I think he's been immense. Yes. Obviously, 16 years of age. Don't want, don't want to spoil it, but he is the only, I think, you know, we haven't got a Pedro or Gavi to come yet, have we? So is that purely because of the injuries? What, that they aren't the, on the list? Pedri and Gavi are not in this list. Yeah, I mean, I think it was 2021, Pedri played 70 games yeah. in competitions for Spain and, uh, and Barcelona, and he's really struggled with his body since. Gavi was brilliant, brilliant at the start of the season, but he's been injured for a number of months now. Gavi is, uh, is maybe not quite as technically secure as Pedri, but is a real warrior as well. They're both excellent players, but for this season, it's Yamal. Yeah, youngest player in La Liga this season. Played in 27 of Barcelona's 28 La Liga games at the age of 16. Six goals, four assists. You're a big fan of him as well? Yeah, it has to be on the list. At 16, it's so exciting, isn't it? Like, ridiculous. Especially when it comes through La Masia, there's always this amazing thing that he's in the hype. Who's he going to be? The next Messi gets thrown around all the time. There's also a caution to the wind. You had it with Fatih and even, like, Christian Teo. Remember they first broke through? Mm. Christian Teo was like, oh, my God. He obviously did have Messi working with him. But your mouth feels different. It feels so different. It feels so fresh, so new. I really like him, and I think he has... You may be a bit high. I don't know. It's so hard to say because I don't know who's next. But mm. and also he's so young. He's so raw as well still. Yeah. But he's also going to be on this list for the next five years. That's so young physical years. for a sixteen-year-old. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Great change of pace. But right, number four. Number you've four. Got to do, you're getting is, the crunch numbers you're getting now. Getting the crunch. This is a player that maybe doesn't have as big a name or as established name as some of these others on this list. But Javi Simmons. If you don't know about him, you should know about him. He has been brilliant. He is the definition of a wonder kid. He was uh, in La Masia, uh, brought through at Barcelona. There was YouTube compilations of him as a sort of 12-year-old. Mm. Uh, Mina Raiola signed him as a 14-year-old to his talent roster. He then joined PSG at 16, was given 1 million euros per year as a 16-year-old. Just crazy. Cool. Didn't really get a look in at PSG. They actually then sold him. Uh, to PSV last year. He ends up being Dutch Player of the Year. His first year of playing regular football, joint top scorer in that division as well. PSG then buy him back. So he's currently a PSG player, but then he's loaned to RB Leipzig this year. So this guy's moved around a lot, mm. and he feels like maybe he doesn't have the... He's not necessarily going to have the loyalty to PSG. That he, I think he's potentially going to have a big move this summer. But at RB Leipzig this year, he's been absolutely brilliant. He's one of those players where, you, well, obviously, we watch from the TV, we're not on the pitch, and you see what's going on and you see the perfect pass and you see the perfect time to play it. This guy does it nearly every time. He is exceptional to watch and scores some remarkable goals as well. He's a lot of fun. Great insight from Dugu there. Eight goals, ten assists and 35 appearances for Leipzig, 20 years of age. Um, for you, would he be on this list, Ellis? And, and if so, where would you have him out of interest? Literally just watched him yesterday against Cologne in the 5-1 win for them, and he is just, he is so special. Yeah. He is unbelievably good. He's, like you said, coming through, playing for PSG and Barca. Hasn't really played for either of them. The, the move to PSV was really interesting. Qu quickly got back to PSG. I think he should be top three. I think... I'm guessing you're going to have, I can sort of see this, uh, one of the next names hasn't been as good this season, I don't think. So, and yeah, he's going to be, he's got a great name as well, once again, Xavi, <laughs> Xavi loves, in the name. He, lo he, lo he loves the name. And I also do think there's definitely something to be said that PSG have effectively long-term planned for the departure of Mbappe mm. to a level with the emergence of Xavi Simmons, yep. who they're yeah. obviously going to bring back from that successful loan at Clearly. Leipzig and implement on that left-hand side. Yeah. Like, the scary, scary times. Yeah, Stick it on then. And, uh, and it's alluded to it there. Should we go with your next next few? So who yeah, it's an three? interesting one at three. Jamal Musiala. Mm. Um, I think if we'd done this this time last year, he'd potentially be number one. Mm. Um, but he maybe has not been as consistent as he was last year. I think that's fair enough to say. But this is a guy who's been playing regularly for Bayern Munich now for four years. Yeah. And he's still under 21 or 21 or under. Um, just when you watch him, you always think he's about to lose the ball, but he never does. Yeah. He's got a really yeah. interesting style. He's quite ungainly. He's very small, very thin. He doesn't look like he should be as effective as he is at dribbling. But I don't know if you're, you know, after this show, go on YouTube, watch his goal against Freiburg from a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, he's absolutely exceptional. Uh, was in the Bundesliga team of the season last year, vying with Jude Bellingham for player of the year. Yeah. Maybe not as good this year, but I still think he's an excellent player. I think that's a fair point, but then a lot of Bayern players haven't been at the level that you expected them this year. That's evident by the league table. I, I, I did a lot of the England under 21 games at the time when he was, the, the, you know, debating between England and Germany. And I, I'm a, I've seen a lot of Musiala and I'm a massive fan of his. So I know what you're talking about with regards to form, but ceiling, very high ceiling for this player. 
It feels like he's not even a wonder kid anymore. He's been around that long. Yeah. Yeah. How long he's, he's, he's still only 21. We're going to have the same thing with Yamal, right? We're going to, like, he's going to be spoken about for so long. It's had the same thing with Pedri and Gabby as well. But Musiala, my only rebuttal would be I don't think he should be third because the season hasn't been as good. And I know obviously Bayern haven't done as well, but he is a key cog in that side, which hasn't done very well. He's obviously going to have Germany on his back, really. He's probably the, one of the stars, if not the star of the German side going into the Euros. And he clearly is. I think he's one of the, he's one of the best players in the world, but mm. I feel like maybe... Should be a bit lower. Still 10 goals, 6 assists in 30 apps for Bayern. So still, I mean... In we're a poor talking, season. Talking, exactly, yeah. So stick him up. Let's see your... There's still major you... moments in his career. You think of the last game of last season. Last season when to, when to picked, win the Bundesliga title Dortmund, with that yeah. goal against Dortmund. Late, wasn't it? Florian Wirtz, number two. If you guys haven't heard of him, you soon will. This guy is destined insight. for Man City. He's destined for Real Madrid. An exceptional talent. Uh, signed from Cologne, Bayer Leverkusen's rivals as a youngster. They'll be kicking themselves now at Bayer Leverkusen. Had a cruciate ligament injury a few years ago. Missed over 40 games in a season. Came back last year. It was crucial to Xabi Alonso's side qualifying for the Europa League. Uh, that sort of going from 17th to 6th, I think they finished last year. And then this year, 37 games unbeaten in all competitions for Bayer Leverkusen. I think only four draws in that time. They've scored over 100 goals. And you can point to Grimaldo, the left wing-back. You can point to Fringbong, yeah. the right wing-back. But this guy is the brains. Uh, he is just the most genius footballer to watch. His timing of passes, his spatial awareness. He's an exceptional, exceptional talent. Um, and it's not going to be long before the biggest clubs in the world are looking at him. You know, if City are looking for a De Bruyne replacement in a few years' time, he'd be my guy. You, you look like you were about to say the exact about same thing. You about to say the exact same thing. Yeah. He is unbelievable. Like, he is fantastic. One of the best, will be top five players in the world at some point. He, he's just, wow. he's so key to that Leverkusen side. Like you've said about Frimpong and Grimaldo as well. And, like, people have spoken about, like, Xhaka being consistent or whatever. But there is a level to him. His ceiling is ridiculous. And I don't think we even were there yet. Mm. Like, he's that good. And like I said, it feels so natural that De Bruyne has maybe got a year max left at Man City. Mm -hmm. He is the heir. The KDB replacement for you? He's the heir to the front. 10 goals, 17 assists. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And what I think you're noticing as well is Musiala and Florian Vats are two of the most aesthetically pleasing mm. footballers. Same yeah. with Xavi Simmons. Yeah. Like, when you watch Florian Vats with those low socks, his yeah. ability to dribble and maintain possession like Jamal Musiala is, is actually frightening. Yeah. Yeah. And those two are, you know, at the Euros. I mean, how how are you getting on the, in the yeah, same side? And on that? the basis of this season, look, this is three Bundesliga players. He's created more chances than both of them, more dribbles than both of them. Yeah. If it's based on this season, he's number two. Yeah, good luck getting so, both of those in the same team. Yeah. yeah. Number yeah. one, who's number one? Now, it's either the obvious name or you've had a, a bit of a stinker. <laughs> got, to, got to be one. It's got to be Jude. It's, it's got to be Jude. Jude. We yeah. talked about him in the first section of the show. His character, his performances in big games this year is maybe something we didn't mention at the start of the show. Brace versus Barcelona, big goals against Hirona, Betis. Uh, in the Champions League as well, he's contributed a goal in every game he's played. Uh, Real Madrid, I don't think they played particularly well in the Champions League this year, but as usual, they find a way to the quarter-final stage. Who would bet against them against Man City as well? Pops up with a stoppage time goal in their first game against Union Berlin. Huge assist in their last game against Leipzig. He's faultless. He is genuinely faultless as a footballer. Uh, and to say that at, what, 20 years of age? Yeah. I think he's remarkable. Yeah, stick him up then. He's the top goal scorer in La Liga, having a great season. So let's get your thoughts, Ellis. What would you change? What would you change, yeah? On the list, I think there's some ordering that could be done. I think Nico Williams should be lower. Cole Palmer should maybe be top six, I think. Um, just some names that haven't been thrown out there. A centre-half isn't on the list. I think, um, obviously, Antonio Silva from Benfica, I think is a fantastic, one of the best young centre-backs in the world. Is brilliant. If we're going to be... I don't want to be biased towards Leeds because it's not actually that, but Archie Gray <laughs> at 17. Top I, 10. Top 10. Oh, I, I, I kind of come back to this in two, three years' time. Are you, are you putting him between above Jude? And <laughs> oh, I, I, if we could have a 0.5, I'd have actually grown up there. <laughs> but I think there's a. I could justify you to. I cannot express, obviously, I watch Leeds every single week, how good Archie Gray is. Like, at the age of 17, he was in the Leeds squad at 15. Like, there's a reason, like, he is fantastic. And it might come across as. It does come across as biased. But <laughs> yeah, please, does. please be aware, like, he is, in a few years' time, Archie Gray will play for England and okay. I will be vindicated. No, no Camavinga either. No. And no Joao Neves. Doku is a couple no. of names just, just chucking names out no there. No Joao but, Neves. But it's, tough. it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's and you, you mentioned the likes of Pedro and Gavi injured as well. This is yes. based on current form. There is confirmation. Let us know what you think of that list at home. Top 10 wonder kids in the world right now. Okay.